Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you three things keeping you tired if you're an empathic person. I'm an empath myself and I understand the interesting and peculiar uh, phenomenon of feeling extremely exhausted for no discernible reason. At the time of shooting this video, most of us, if you're in the world, are on lockdown because of this coronavirus, right? And a lot of empaths right now are feeling so freaking tired, so exhausted. Well, why is that? Why would we feel tired not doing anything? Well, because we are wired differently than most people. We have very sensitive central nervous systems and there are three things in our life that are very common and socially acceptable that almost everybody on the planet participates in quite a bit that when we let those things go, we are liberated from this unnecessary fatigue. In this video, again, I'm going to share with you what those three things are. And I really predict when you hear them, you're going to, it's going to click with you. It's going to make sense. Number one is your smartphone. No, don't say that. I know a lot of us are pretty attached to the smartphone. I'm not saying don't, you know, throw out your phone or anything, but hear me out. And I, I've done a lot of research on this. I'm reading a book right now called Digital Minimalism by a person named Cal Newport. It has all this evidence, all this science, and all these really uh, cool historical kind of uh, uh, scenarios that's woven into this very, very solid case that our modern lifestyle, which includes an incessant attachment to something that stimulates our nervous system, keeps our mind going, emanates blue light, which keeps our mind from releasing melatonin, keeping us awake, keeping us stimulated, keeping us hooked, keeping us bound to these little, uh, it's like this, this book sort of referred to the, the, the smartphones like, what was it, like a, like a slot machine. You know, you can pick up your phone and there's the potential for a little reward. What's the reward? A like on Facebook, a follow on Instagram, a good email, or something along those lines that produces a little dopamine drip in your mind. It's a little, it's a dopamine dripping. Uh, the, the dopamine is what makes you feel good. It's like a, it's like a, a little bit of a high, very similar to winning the lottery. So we, we, most of us are very addicted to this. I just watched this whole episode on 60 Minutes. There was a YouTube 60 Minutes. I'm not sure if it's the same as like at the news show. I don't even know. Um, but anyway, there's this person, this, this ex uh, programmer that used to work with Apple, who's sort of like, like a whistleblower in a sense. And he was saying there are like very, very sophisticated, intelligent people purposely designing these devices to keep you addicted, to keep you on them. An example of that is you ever notice on Facebook or Instagram that you, it's just like an endless scroll. Well, they've done all these tests and they know that that's going to keep you on longer. They've built in this slot machine sort of effect into all the apps and pretty much all the things. Now, again, I have a smartphone sitting right over there. I'm not trying to spread fear and be all paranoid, but I know that now that I have boundaries with my, with my smartphone, I have way more energy. Now for me, I, I kind of had an extreme case because I have an online, uh, an online presence, an online business. I use Instagram and YouTube and Facebook for business reasons. And I have a lot of things going on online that can produce these dopamine drips for me. When I get a lot of followers at once, when I make a sale or something online, it has a huge, huge impact on my mind. And because it's like my job, I have to, in a sense, spend a, probably more time than usual for most people doing this kind of stuff. So I saw like, man, this is like keeping me feeling depressed. This is like zapping my energy. After I do this computer work or I'm on my phone, I feel very spacey and ungrounded. I'm not present for my dear family, my three children. They want to go play. I don't have the energy for it. And once I started setting boundaries for with myself, which is not easy, I had to really stick to them. My life transformed immensely. So again, I'm not saying throw out your phone, but what I'll give you a little example of what I do. Right over there, in fact, I'll show you. I unplugged it, but it's like this thing. It's a, it's a type of charger. So this charger sits over there at my desk. And my phone, it's not there, it's over there. Normally, it sits right on here. I have built in this mental connection with putting my phone on this thing. When I leave the room, for the most part, my phone stays in here. I try to keep the phone in here and use it as like a business device. Um, so anyway, having some little rule that works for you in your own lifestyle, I guarantee if you cut down on your time being on your smartphone, 
you know, especially when it's aimlessly, just out of boredom, you're gonna feel like a million bucks. Number two, and I guarantee most of you are gonna nod when I say this, it's, it's negative people. You, do you have negative people in your life that you feel guilty setting boundaries with that in fact suck out your energy completely? Most of us do. These, these relationships, they, they offer us many lessons, many lessons of empowerment and discernment and, and boundaries, and they have a place. But I know empathic people in general, I am one, and I've coached hundreds of them all over the world. And we have this interesting thing where we put others before ourselves. We're willing to exhaust ourselves just to like be there for a friend. But when it's very one-sided, when you're not really getting anything from this friend, you can, you'll know it because you can feel it physically. Your body doesn't lie. If you're feeling exhausted after being around a certain group of people or these friends, your career, whatever it is, um, that's, that's your body saying, listen, something's out of balance. And the only thing keeping it out of balance is the guilt. Well, we've been friends for so long. Uh, I, I don't know how they're going to take it. I've been there. I had this really close friend. I'm not going to say his name in case he sees this. And we were very, very close friends for, for most of our life. We were like, we did everything together. We really did. Without going into details, we were like, like two peas in a pod. And then I had the spiritual awakening. And I started to become real sensitive and very empathic, sensitive to energy. And, I, and my, my awareness was affected. And I could suddenly see the, 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 the gross imbalance in, in this relationship and how it really was one-sided and how it was, it was literally like a ball and chain um, but, I, but, I, but I stuck in there because I kept insisting on seeing the person not for who they were, but for who I thought they could be, but were choosing not to be, okay? And it was like this guilt, this investment I put into the relationship. I don't know how they're going to take it, but eventually it got so burdensome, so fatig so tiring that I just, I just knew my intuition was screaming at me, Victor, you got to let this go. And of course, I didn't say, hey, you're draining my energy, you know. I just started coming around less and sort of like, I recommend doing it in some kind of clever, creative way that's as minimally, you know, uh, you know, painful for the, for the other person. But you have the right to be happy. You have the right to have your energy. No person deserves to suck out your energy in the way many of us allow it to do. And, this, I'm not, and now it's not easy. It's one of the hardest life teachers are all these, these complicated relationships, but your body doesn't lie. And a lot of times when you let go of the thing that you just know is draining you in the form of a relationship, it's not only going to give you your energy back, but you're going to be less depressed. You're going to be more happy. You're going to open up space in your life for new opportunities. And it can really, once you let that one thing go, it can be a very, in a very expansive experience beyond having more energy in your life. Number three, Things you think you need, but no, you don't. Career, living situation, relationship, habit, uh, area of focus. Okay, your body is, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I always say this to people. It's a blessing that you feel this fatigue because it's, you're, again, your body doesn't lie. It's a way of communicating information to yourself. When you are in harmony with life and in harmony within yourself, there is no fatigue. There's an abundance of energy flowing through you almost at all times. And you feel amazing. Now, most people go through life not having this, these like obvious signs when something in their life is out of alignment, but you do. But what prevents us from liberating ourselves and freeing up our energy that's being spent holding on is the mind, the monkey mind that thinks it needs something, that's insisting on going through life in the way it was taught instead of the way it knows intuitively is ideal and best for them. And when you start just taking these leaps of faith, and listening to your intuition and parting ways with the things that you know do not belong in your life, even if they once had a place, no longer do they. When you let those things go, you have your energy back. You'll have not only your energy back, like it's back to normal, but you'll have a lot of energy and you'll feel fantastic. And the last thing I'll mention, especially for those people who say, you know what, Vic, 
I agree with what you're saying, but I don't feel ready to do that. I understand. It took me some time to come to terms with, you know, set, severing ties with relationships and careers and stuff like that. I know these things can be difficult. A lot of times it pertains to your career. I remember for most of my life, from the age of 21 until about 30, I was a personal trainer. I loved fitness and it, it eventually my career turned into where I owned a gym. And when I started that gym, I, I was just filled with enthusiasm and energy and I wasn't getting exhausted because I felt so good. Um, but towards the end, when it was just time for me to move on into a new direction in life, it was like my destiny in a sense. Um, that same career, that same situation that once felt great started to really wear on me. Not only like making me feel exhausted, it was it just felt like a source of stress, a ball and chain to stress and anxiety and depression and negativity was just like in my life. And again, I, for a while, I was like fretting, like, wow, why is this happening? But I, but I knew why it was happening. It was because it was time to move on. When I finally listened to that, I moved on. And now I'm doing what I do now. I'm making YouTube videos and working with other empathic people all over the world. And it, my life is way better. And I have my energy back. Now, this last thing I'm going to share is for people who say, okay, Vic, I, I, I agree with you, but I'm just not ready to let go. It's not ready. And that's totally okay. And that's, I really mean that. I'm not suggesting any of you just take bold action from this video. Though some of you, you might feel inspired to do that. Um, I totally get it. It took me time to come to terms with changing careers and letting go of friends and setting those boundaries. You gotta really, you gotta really sit with it for a little while, okay? And it's totally fine. But for those of you who want something that's gonna work anyway, some kind of little hack, for one, Set the boundaries with the smartphone. Reduce your, your caffeine intake. That's not really good for empaths for most for the most part. And thirdly, is start exercising. And I know a lot of you are saying, Vic, I'm already exhausted. Exercise is like, it takes energy that I just don't have. Well, here's the thing. Exercise does require energy. There's no way around that. But it's, a, it, and it's also, exercise is a source of stress. It's literally stress on your body that you're willingly doing to yourself. And I totally understand the vantage point of the empath saying, well, Vic, I'm already tired. This makes no sense. Well, exercise is a very uh, beneficial type of stress because it leads to adaptation. It's, it's done so in a way that caused your body to adapt and become stronger and more efficient, more fit. Fitness improvements will occur when you do this. And your body, you will literally train your body to process and manage stress just more effectively by getting stronger, getting, getting faster, becoming, you know, having more endurance and stamina, it will translate into your life. So maybe you're not going to let go of your, your needy friend right now, but here's the thing. When you get yourself in shape, you'll be able to tolerate that needy friend a heck of a lot longer and you'll be able to leave saying, okay, I can recognize that person's not good for me, but I still feel fine. And for those of you who say, you know what, Vic, that, that resonates. I'm going to try, I, I gotta, I gotta, Start working out right now, but don't really know where to turn. Or maybe you've tried other exercise programs that worked for a little while, but eventually made you feel tired. I have a program I came out with recently. It's called Ascension Body. It's a, it's a fitness program literally designed for empathic people because I'm one as well. And I've worked with so many all over the world. And I realized that we are wired differently. We do respond to exercise stress very differently and require kind of a unique approach to fitness. And after a lot of experimentation in my own life, I found something that works brilliantly. It works wonders for empathic people. So if you, if you want to check it out, again, go ahead down below. I have a whole video where I explain what it's about. If it resonates, great. And if not, that's cool too. You have an amazing day, my friends. Great talking to you. See you next time. Namaste.